This video serves as an introduction to Excel and a resource for the descriptive statistics assignment for the second semester of outcomes assessment in higher education. For additional information and tutorials, consider resources on LinkedIn Learning or YouTube. In this video, the examples are framed around a scenario related to residence life and housing at a university. For this demonstration, the data is made up and does not reflect actual student information. Imagine you've received three Excel files and the data needs to be organized and analyzed to prepare a report. And it has information about students living on campus, including their residence hall and whether or not they're living in a living learning community. One file is from institutional research and it includes academic information for all students on campus that can be used to calculate the grade point average. The third file is also from housing and it contains information about the types of residence halls, the end goal in this process is to create a pivot table, which will allow me to analyze information about students who live in residence halls, including average GPA by hall, or comparing students who live in living learning communities to students who don't. To do this, I need to get all the information in one place. Ultimately, I will be pulling information into this spreadsheet using a VLOOKUP formula. Looking at this spreadsheet, the information is organized pretty well, before digging into the data, we will review how to navigate Excel. Before I begin manipulating the spreadsheets, I also want to make sure Excel will be able to read the formulas I'm creating. I want to highlight the whole spreadsheet by clicking on the upper left-hand corner and then right-clicking and going down to Format Cells. I want to make sure that all the cells are formatted as general. In Excel, rows are numbered, and the rows typically represent individual participants or cases. Columns are indicated by letters, and these typically represent variables. At the intersection of a column and a row is a cell, and cells are indicated by a letter than a number. To make it easier to see information in your spreadsheet, you can adjust the column widths and row heights. You can do this manually by hovering your cursor between the columns and clicking and dragging to adjust the width. You can also highlight multiple columns, hover your cursor between the columns, and double click to have Excel automatically adjust the width of the columns to fit your data. An Excel file is called a workbook, and a workbook may contain multiple sheets. One of the useful functions in Excel is its sorting data. In order to sort data, I need to highlight the sections that I want Excel to sort. I can do this by highlighting my data, and I could scroll all the way down to the bottom. However, the spreadsheet has 15,000 rows and that could take a while. An easier way to do this is to click on the top left cell and hold down Control and Shift, then use the arrow keys, in this case the right arrow and the down arrow, to highlight all the data at once. I'll then go to the Data tab and Sort, and select what I would like Excel to sort by. In this case, last name, and then first name. When I look at student GPAs, one of the things I'm interested in is whether GPAs differ by housing style, apartments versus suites. I might also look at upper division versus first year GPAs. The way the spreadsheet is organized, it looks nice and I can see which halls are which type of housing, but this wouldn't be particularly useful to sort by hall or to pull into another spreadsheet. I need to make a few changes to how this is organized. First, I want to insert a column and I'm going to drag and drop the type of housing into this column. I can click on the cell, hover the cursor at the edge until it changes to have the four arrows, and then click and drag to move the data. Then I can hover my cursor at the bottom right hand corner until it becomes the small black cross, and then I can click and drag to copy that information. I'll do this for each type of housing. This is a good first step, but the information about the type of hall 
is still connected to the students living in the hall, and I want these to be separate variables. I'll insert another column, and I could cut and paste the word apartment or suite into the next column. I could also use the text to columns option. To do this, I will highlight the column. Under the data tab, select text to columns. I have to tell Excel what to use to delimit the text. In this case, there's a space between first year or upper division and apartments or suites. When I select space, I can see that Excel is going to cut the data right where I've asked it to. Click finish. Excel says there's already data there. I don't see data there, so I'm going to click OK. And now I can see that it's divided between apartments and suites and first year or upper division. So with a little bit of cleaning, the sheet is ready to go so that I can pull the necessary information over to my master spreadsheet. In this case, I want to use credit hours and points to calculate students' GPA. The formula for GPA is points divided by credit hours. All formulas in cell begin with an equal sign. In this case, I'm telling Excel that GPA equals points divided by credit hours. But the easiest way to calculate GPA for all of the students in the spreadsheet is to flash fill. I do this by hovering my cursor in the bottom right hand corner until it becomes a small black cross and then double clicking and the formula will cascade all the way down. This looks a little bit messy, so I'm going to highlight the column, go to Format Cells, and under Number, I'm going to ask Excel to stop at two decimal places. If I wanted to format this similarly to the rest of the spreadsheet, I could click on the top cell, hold down Control Shift and the down arrow, and then go to the Home tab and add a border. You'll notice that when I click on the column, Excel doesn't have the GPA, it has the formula. If I was to change something in the formula, it would change the GPA. I want to make sure that that doesn't happen, that there aren't any mistakes when I copy this over to another spreadsheet. So I'm going to highlight the whole column, copy it, and paste as values. Now, instead of a formula, Excel has the values in the cell. Up to this point, I was clicking between different Excel files, but to make it easier on myself to look up the information, I moved all of the sheets into the same workbook. I did this by right-clicking on the sheet, going to Move or Copy, and selecting the workbook where I wanted to consolidate all the sheets. The VLOOKUP formula begins like any other formula with an equal sign. Now that the data has been organized and cleaned up, I'm ready to use the VLOOKUP formula. In this case, I'm most interested in looking at the GPAs for the students who live on campus and comparing it with the type of hall and living learning communities, so I'm going to pull the grades into the housing spreadsheet. Before you use the VLOOKUP formula, it's important to make sure that the unique identifier is in the leftmost column of your table array or the data that you're going to use to look up your information. In Excel, when you start typing a formula, it will bring up a box that tells you what the formula does. If you open parentheses, Excel shows you the components that make up this function. To start, we'll select our unique ID. It can't be last name because some students share the same last name, and it can't be Emple ID because not all the IDs are complete. Some of them are missing numbers. So in this case, we're going to go with FSU ID. Once I enter that piece of information and a comma, Excel tells me the next thing it's looking for 
which is the table array or where Excel is going to go and look for this unique identifier. If I click on the grade spreadsheet, I can then highlight everything in this sheet. And I'll do this by using Control Shift, right arrow, down arrow. Now I can see in my formula that Excel has completed the range where I want it to look. When I type a comma, now I can see it's moving on to the column index number. This is where I tell Excel, what information do I want you to bring back? GPA is in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh column. So I'll type seven. And then I have to type in true or false. I almost always exclusively use false because I want it to bring back an exact match. Now I can click return and see what happens. So Excel has used this unique identifier to go into another table array and bring back the GPA associated with this person. If I want to populate GPAs for everyone, I can flash fill and Excel will bring it over all the GPAs using the VLOOKUP formula. You'll notice the same thing as before. If I click on the cell, it is the formula, not the actual data. So I want to highlight the column, copy, and paste as values. In addition to GPA, I want to bring over the number of credit hours because ultimately I want to calculate and display students who are on presidents and deans list. And to do that, I need to know not only what their GPA was, but the number of credit hours they were enrolled in. So I will use the same formula We're still going to use FSU ID as the unique identifier. In this case, I'll use Control Shift, right arrow, up arrow to highlight the entire table. And credit hours is column five. And I want an exact match, so I will type in false. When I hit return, I see that there's a problem. So I want to go look at my formula. I can see the table array, the column number. I did not include the lookup value accidentally. So I want to make sure I click on the lookup value and type in a comma. Now I'm getting the number of credit hours. And I'll flash fill and then copy and paste as values. At this point, we've pulled over all the information we need from the grade spreadsheet. Now I need to pull over some information from the housing spreadsheet. When I create my pivot table, I want to be able to look at whether students are first time or upper division and whether they live in suite or apartment style halls. In this case, I want to pull over first time or upper division. Like with previous VLOOKUPs, I need a unique identifier, and in this case, the unique identifier would be the hall. Looking at my table array, or where I'm going to get the information, I can see that the unique identifier is in the leftmost column. I'll start my formula with an equal sign, VLOOKUP, open parentheses, choose my lookup value or unique identifier, comma, Go to my table array, comma. I want it to bring back column two. And as always, I want this to be false. Interestingly, I'm getting a number of errors here. So let's troubleshoot and see what could be happening. Sometimes when you create a VLOOKUP formula, it's necessary to lock the formula in order for Excel to bring back the information. And you can lock the formula by putting a dollar sign 
in front of the column and the cell and the column and the cell for the table array. I'm looking at my formula and I can see that my unique identifier is in the far left hand column. I also want to make sure there's no extra spaces after any of the items. But since some of them are pulling over and others are not, I don't think that's the case. One thing that I can do, particularly when Excel is pulling over a lot of information with VLOOKUP, is lock the formula. To lock the formula, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the column and the row for both pieces of the table array. So I put a dollar sign in front of A, 2, F, and 19 because the table array goes from A2 to F19. Now that I've locked the formula, I will flash fill my changes and you can see that that has solved the problem. The next piece of information I'll pull over is the hall style. and flash fill the formula. The same thing is happening. So I'm going to lock the formula with a dollar sign. And flash fill my changes. One of the things that I need to put in my report is whether or not students are on the Dean's List. Students on the Dean's List have a GPA of at least 3.5. I can use an if formula to tell me all of the students who have a GPA of 3.5 or higher. In this case, I'm telling Excel that my logical test is that GPA is greater than or equal to 3.5 comma. If this is true, bring back a one. If this is false, bring back a zero. I can see this worked because the student has a GPA higher than 3.5. And if I flash fill the formula, Excel has a one for every person on the Dean's list. If we want to make this even easier to read, we can change what Excel returns from ones and zeros to words. We do this by changing the value if true to text in quotation marks. And I don't want anything to appear if someone is not on the Dean's List, so I'm going to just put double quotation marks with nothing in between them. I can see this worked for this person on the Dean's List. And now I'm going to flash fill so that it fills into the bottom. One thing that's important to note is people who are on the Dean's List have to be an enrolled in at least 12 credit hours that semester. So I can see that there's some folks who have a GPA of greater than 3.5, but didn't enroll in 12 hours. So I need to modify my if statement. I can create a mega if statement that looks at two pieces of information and only returns Dean's List if both pieces of information are true. In this case, I want to bracket out the first part of the statement because this is my first logical test. So GPA has to be greater than 3.5. And then I'm going to tell Excel to multiply and look at a second logical test where credit hours are greater than or equal to 12. I'm going to leave the second part of the formula alone because I still want it to return either Dean's List or nothing. But I do need to add an extra parentheses because now I have two logical tests. So those are both in the red parentheses and the entire formula is in the black parentheses. So now if I hit return, I can see that this is still working and then I can flash fill 
and it should have updated so that people with greater than 3.5 but not 12 credit hours are no longer listed on the Dean's list. I can do the same for a president's list. So a president's list is a GPA of 4.0. So I'm going to create that mega if statement. And I'm going to add extra parentheses because I have two logical tests. So a GPA of greater than or equal to 4.0 and credit hours greater than or equal to 12. This is true, return president's list, and if it's false, return nothing. And then if I flash fill, I can see the people on the president's list. You'll insert a column next to the things that you want to put together. So in this case, we're creating the full name. And the function for merging cells together is called concatenate. So I will open parentheses, choose the first cell, comma, and the second cell. I can see that concatenate has worked to put the two cells together, but this isn't very useful in this format. So I need to add quotation marks, space, quotation marks, and another comma. So this is telling Excel to put the text together but leave a space in between the two cells. So now I can see that the concatenate formula has worked to put the names together. Before we create our pivot table, there's one final combination of VLOOKUP and IF statement to apply to the spreadsheet. I can see here the students who are in living learning communities and which hall they live in. And on the housing information sheet, I can see which LLC is associated with each hall. In order to get the information about which LLC the student lives in on this spreadsheet, I can use a VLOOKUP and an IF statement. First, I'll use a VLOOKUP to pull over the information about the living learning community onto the spreadsheet. My lookup value is the hall name, and I'm looking in the housing information sheet. I want it to return column four, false. And I'm going to go ahead and lock the spreadsheet since that was a problem earlier. Here we can see that anyone living in the halls with a living learning community, it has pulled the information over. And if the hall doesn't have a living learning community, Excel has put in a zero as a placeholder. Now I want to use an if formula to tell Excel if living learning community equals yes, we always put text in quotation marks, if this is true, I want you to pull over the name of the living learning community, and if it's false, leave it blank. So now when I flash fill, only students who have a yes for living learning community has it pulled over the name of the living learning community, whereas students who may live in a hall with a living learning community but do not live in the living learning community it has not pulled that information over. What I want to do now is clean up my spreadsheet before creating a pivot table. First, I'm going to add borders to all the cells. And then I want to copy the entire spreadsheet and paste as values. This enables me to delete columns that would otherwise be required to maintain the formulas. Now at this point, it's finally time to create a pivot table. 
I'm going to start by highlighting all the information to be included. And then I'll go to insert pivot table. I've already selected all of my data. So Excel is telling me, yes, you've selected this range. This is what you want to include. And I want Excel to drop this into a new worksheet. A pivot table is a tool in Excel that allows you to summarize large amounts of data fairly quickly and easily. One of the areas of interest is average GPA by hall. To figure this out, I'm going to go ahead and click on the fields that I know are areas of interest and see what Excel does. Excel has put all of the halls, one in each row, which is useful. That is my unit of analysis or my case at this moment. But it's created a sum of DPAs, which isn't terribly helpful. So what I can do is go to the value section, click on sum of DPA, and change the value field settings. This allows me to tell Excel, I don't want you to create a sum, I want you to look for the average. And while I'm here, I'm going to look at the number format and tell Excel I only want two decimal places. Now when I click OK, Excel has shifted from adding all of the GPAs for every person in each hall to creating an average of GPA. This pivot table allows me to see the average GPA by hall without a lot of energy on my part. I didn't have to sort the giant spreadsheet by hall and then calculate the GPA by highlighting and creating a formula. Excel is doing all of the math for me now that I've created my variables and set up my pivot table. Because I have other variables in here, I can look at other information related to the GPA by hall. For example, I might want to see this information filtered by hall style. So I can look at just the apartments and see the average GPA, or just the suites and see average GPA. If I wanted to look at both at the same time, I can select multiple items, but that's not very useful because it's just showing me all of the halls at once. What would be more helpful is moving the hall style into columns. And now I can see the average GPA for apartments and suites. Another option would be to swap out hall style for first time or upper division students and have the same comparison. Once I decide I like this table, I might decide to insert another pivot table so that I can do some additional analysis. And in this case, since I haven't already highlighted the data, Excel is asking me what I want to use to create my pivot table. So I would go over to the housing roster, select the spreadsheet data, and click OK. And now I have the option to create a different pivot table. Maybe this one is focused on hall style and average GPA. And I want to make sure that I'm formatting this with two decimal places. The next pivot table I tried to create was to look at the number of students on the deans and presidents list by hall. At some point, I turned the camera off and stopped recording because I was having trouble getting Excel to properly calculate the number of students. This could be due to user error, but I also think it was because Excel was having trouble counting the words accurately. I realized I could go back into the original spreadsheet and add some additional columns that would facilitate analysis for the pivot table that I was trying to create. And I realized that I made a mistake as I was manipulating my spreadsheet. So I want to show you how to fix the mistake, which will then allow us to look at the number of students on the Dean's list. Excel is having a hard time counting the text in these cells. Excel would have a lot easier of a time if these were ones and zeros. So I'm going to create an if statement to say that if this cell equals Dean's list one and if not zero. So essentially I am recreating what I had earlier that I deleted in full acknowledgement that you probably shouldn't delete columns 
until you're sure you don't need them. So I'm going to call these the binary columns because the binary is one or zero. And this will let me know which variables to use when I'm manipulating my pivot table. So the same for this, if this equals president's list, one, if not zero, and flash middle. Let's try to create a pivot table with this new information and see if we can count the number of students on the dean's list. So we'll move that dean's list binary. This is already looking more promising because there are only 1,629 students instead of the whole range of students. And if we put hall into rows, now we're seeing a summary of the students who are on the dean's list. We could also add a column with students on the president's list. The pivot tables, the pivot tables I've demonstrated are just a few options. Pivot tables I've demonstrated in this exercise are just a few of the ones that you could create. It can be a little tricky to figure out how to manipulate pivot tables to begin with, but it can be very useful rather than trying to sort the spreadsheet and do your own calculations. Finally, I can use my pivot tables to create charts. If I click on pivot chart, Excel is going to show me how things would look depending upon what I choose. In this case, the most appropriate chart would be columns, but I can see here that I don't want both the average GPA and the count of FSUIDs because it stretches out the scale so long that the average GPA is hard to see. I'm going to remove the count of FSUIDs and try again. Now I have a chart with the average GPA by Hall. One caution is that Excel does tend to truncate the scale, so it's only showing a very narrow range for the GPA. And to be more true to the data, I want to show this on a true four point scale. Similarly, I can create a pivot chart This is showing the number of students on the dean's list and the president's list. And I would want to go in and clean up the data labels, but this allows me to see the number of students on each list by hall. This video was designed to demonstrate how to organize data and use formulas to get all the information into one place and complete some basic calculations before using a pivot table to analyze your data and look at some descriptive statistics. This is a very small sliver of the capacity for Excel to conduct analysis. And if you're interested in deeper analysis with your data, I would encourage you to look at some of the tutorials in LinkedIn Learning or YouTube. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your project.